Hello, you beautiful people. It's Bonnie Gillespie coming at you from New York. I love my New York office. Um, this view of the Empire State Building is absolutely beautiful. It's a gorgeous day. Putting on a little doTERRA, past tense. This stuff is amazing. It's peppermint and some other stuff. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Oh, cilantro. Is that and Roman chamomile? It's very relaxing. Oh, and rosemary, lavender. This has a lot more than peppermint. Anyway, it makes me feel really relaxed and I like it. And it takes away any kind of little headache that I might have. Oops, and now I'm knocking things over. How's it going? Hello, you beautiful people. Hi, David. Good to see you. Hi, Laura. Glad you're here. Let's see if everyone is piling in. I'm doing okay, Johnny. Thank you for asking. Um, My back gave me a little trouble yesterday, but I'm not surprised. I was really ambitious yesterday with all the things that I did. Um, and I, you know, I acted like haven't been on bed rest for three and a half months version of Bonnie Gillespie yesterday. And, uh, and I did a lot and I was carrying around a heavy backpack and just going all through, uh, the West village and, um, down to Tribeca and, just doing a lot. And so my feet are all broke up and my back got a little, um, a little tense. So I had to use, oh my God, these things, guys. All right. These things, secret weapon. If you have back issues or anywhere else that like gets hurty, look at it. It's a dollar fifty. It's a buck fifty. These McKesson instant cold compress packs, they also have them um, for hot, but this one is for cold. And I have some of each. And these things are amazing. I, um, travel with these. Uh, I keep one in my backpack at all times. I used one of these actually when I was uh, in the middle of my speaking engagement, uh, one of my three speaking engagements in Chicago. Uh, the last one I was doing there, I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel my back seize up. And I was like, great, pop the thing that's inside this and then shake it up and all the little beads in here get cold because of chemistry. And, um, and it's, it's an ice pack that you can like carry around. And I don't take this in my carry on luggage when I travel, I pack it in my check baggage because I'm pretty sure they would think this could easily be bomb stuff. So, um, you know, be smart, but I love having those with me. That's actually been fantastic. Hi Latrice. Hi Michael, uh, Randy. Hello, Deb. Good to see you. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, Johnny funny. Um, my hotel room here in New York, they had offered me an upgrade. Like they're so sweet to me here. This is where I always stay uh, when I am in New York and have like, this has been my, my New York home for seven years six years, like this, this is the place I stay. And I'm usually here once a year, sometimes twice a year. And I'm usually here for a week to 10 days at a time. So it's, you know, not a small commitment. I mean, you know, in hotels in New York are not cheap. And so um, this place, uh, they love me and I love them. And so as soon as I arrived and checked in, they were like, you know what, you're going to be here nine days. Let's get you an upgrade. Let's get you a room with a view. Let's get you a refrigerator. Um, and in fact, I can get you a better room if you get into your room and decide it's a little too small. Just come back. We can't get it for you right now. But if you come back in a couple of hours, we can just leave everything packed in your room. Don't unpack. Leave everything packed. And we'll send a bellman up and um, take you to an upgraded room if you decide you want one. And I got into my room and I was like, I actually really like my room. Mainly because it's one that hasn't been renovated yet. I mean, everything's been renovated. Like they did a major renovation a decade plus ago here, um, and and so everything has been up has been updated. But this room hasn't been renovated to the extent that the uh, the old timey, very deep, like serious bathtub has not been replaced with a giant stand up shower. And so I actually said, don't move me because I never take a bath in a hotel bath bathtub because ew. But I went and bought cleaning supplies and bath bombs. And so it's like I'm getting my lush baths here in um, in my hotel room. So that's some of my my little uh, weirdness that's going on here to take care of me and my back. Hey, Kate. Hey, Diane. Uh, I am in New York until Thursday, at which time I go to Toronto. I will be in Toronto for a week. Um, and then June 1st, I'm back in LA and holy crap, I've already set up a trip for June. 
with Keith to Berkeley, which is not, I mean, like that's just up California, but it's not local. Um, and I have more things on the calendar and I'm super excited. I know Stephanie, it's like the idea of like a hotel shower. It's kind of like, mm. but it's also like, well, I mean, they clean it, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's possibly no different than how many people have ever lived in your apartment, depending on where you live. I mean, so eventually you kind of got to get over that kind of shit. Um, but anyway, if I get a chance to see Day Angels in America, thank you, Dom. Okay, cool. Yes, man, Marianne, I'm going to be talking about you, darling. Um, and I know you don't mind. Uh, okay, good. Kate, I'll see you in Berkeley. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank you, David. I am. I'm having a really great trip. Um, I am taking good care of myself. Y'all know that I've been on the mind body uh, journey of healing. If you're not familiar with Dr. John Sarno, uh, this is the author of several books. He passed away last year, but he's the doctor and author of several books about using the mind to heal the body. And that's the path I've chosen um, after having had nearly four months, so about three and a half months of full on bed rest um, uh, since the beginning of the year and then deciding I'm done with that. Um, thank you, Rosalie. I have, I'm going to tell you a funny story about my sweater, by the way. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, I, um, I chose the John Sarno method of using the mind to heal the body because I had done all the medical stuff. Like I, I had all the tests. I spent time in the hospital. I was actually hospitalized for two nights, three days um, in March. I uh, had MRIs, x-rays, blood work. Um, I'm supposed to have massive nerve testing in June, but now I'm going to be canceling that because we, we've, we've ruled out everything physical. Um, and what it is that I'm going through is very different, very definitely a physical manifestation of some of the stress that my uh, my life has had. Uh, it's uh, Gay Hendricks would call it an upper limit problem. Actually, the thing that we're doing in Berkeley, Keith and I are going up to work at um, the Hendricks Institute with Gay and Katie Hendricks uh, on upper limit problems and uh, specifically relationship upper limit problems. And I, I'm so thrilled, you guys, because Keith is super supportive of my woo-woo stuff. He's super supportive of my self-improvement junkie tendencies. And when I said, I think I'm going to go work with um, Gay and Katie Hendricks on some upper limit problem coaching, um, because it's something that my Chicago Sarno doctor, Dr. John Strax recommended. Um, he was like, look, knowing where you are in terms of your awareness of what this problem is and what the likely solutions are, you might want to just it's an upper limit problem. You might want to work with Gay and um, Katie. I'm like, yep, I do. So I, I love that it took me going to Chicago to see a fancy specialist to learn that I should be working in in California with Gay and uh, Katie Hendricks. Um, you know, but it's, sometimes you need somebody to tell you you're wearing Dorothy's red slippers, and that's what that was. So, I mean, but also I'm going to be continuing to work with Dr. Strax in his online program starting next week. Um, I am so thrilled to be able to identify when my body is in actual physical pain and I need to rest and I need an ice pack and I need a hot bath and I need maybe a drug like yes occasionally those are wonderful scientific developments that I don't want to to say never use um, but I don't want to become dependent on anything like that and then I'm also able to see when what's going on in my body is a manifestation of some emotional shit that I'm not dealing with, uh, or just stress. It's very popular with type A personalities, perfectionists, or what Dr. Sarno labels a goodist. And this is somebody who always wants to be a good girl, wants to be a good student, wants to be a good person, and will uh, make decisions that aren't necessarily the most healthy for our own personal boundaries. And even though I think I'm spectacular with my boundaries, apparently there were places where I have walled off some things that have happened in my life and not dealt with them in ways uh, that were complete. And therefore my body has decided that this is the point where uh, it's, it's going to express what it is that's going on in terms of a, a stress level. Yes, David, people who run an empire. Exactly. Exactly. Very, very typical. So um, I'm feeling great. Although yesterday taxed my body a little bit. So today I'm taking a little slower. Let me tell you about the sweater and then we're going to get into how it's never too late. So this is from my favorite designer. Whenever I do my own brand prov, like who are you wearing? And like you get, you have an event, who are you wearing? I'm always going to be wearing Max. 
uh, Max Studio Outlet, Leon Max. Um, these are things that are made beautifully and they are so comfortable and just, I, I, oh my God, I love, 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 love this stuff, this stuff. And I have been, when I was 60 pounds heavier, um, I would go in and buy like nice big open things that maybe I could possibly get away with wearing, but really they're, they're designed for, um, for juniors sizes, not plus sizes. So I, I would always go like, I mean, as soon as I dip down into like anywhere close to a normal size, like a size 12, you know, rather than a size 22, I am going there and I say normal in total air quotes way because normal for my body for a good long time was way plus size and still rocking it by the way, killing it curvy and gorgeous and beautiful. So please do not get it twisted and think that I have a problem with any of that this designer had a problem fitting me uh, when I was uh, the larger sizes. And so I went in and tried on this sweater uh, at the third street promenade in Santa Monica. Hey, Julia with uh, Keith with me. And I had picked up the medium and the large and I went and I took them and the lady was letting me into the changing area. And she said, um, Oh yeah, no, you, you won't need the medium. And I said, Oh yeah, you think the large. And she was like, Oh, I thought you were trying on the medium and the small. And I was like, uh, you're hilarious. And she's like, uh, let me, she took the large away, brought me back a small and said, let me just, you try on the medium. And I was like, oh, they must run really big or something. I tried on the medium. It fit. That's this, that's what this is. And I said, okay, great. I'm set. I'm in Chicago wearing this. And as it goes throughout the day and it starts kind of like stretching around and I'm, you know, living my life and moving and stuff, I'm realizing it's, it's a tent. It's, it's too big. Like it's just, it's so big. And I said, I emailed Keith and I went, you have to go back to the store and buy the small. Oh my God. Oh my God. You have to go back and buy the small. So he went back and he bought the small. And of course the sales lady remembered me and she was like, I don't know why she bought that medium. And I, it, here's why, because I have decades of having been anywhere from a size 14 to a size 22. So I don't have a self-concept that includes A, being a medium, B, being a, a small, are you kidding? And then these, these leggings that I'm wearing right now are a small. And I'm, I, I still not, I don't get it. I don't feel that I, when I walk around, I still very much have what I call fat girl brain. And I still have very much what I call poor girl brain because I spent a long time not having a lot of money. And these are two things that have changed recently. I also have a place in my brain that is not sober and sobriety is new to me. So I bring this up to tie it in because it actually all goes into the same upper limit problem of when we break through issues that have blocked us in any kind of way. And this is where it's going to tie into the age thing and it being never too late. When we have anything that we've decided is going to be a block for us. And for me, that's been growing up poor, being a big girl, not being the most sober person, you know, even before alcohol was my jam, um, I had migraines for a decade and I used prescription painkillers to fight the migraines. And that of course is a total Sarno issue. Like having had migraines pretty much from jump from the moment that I was raped in high school and using migraines as the physical manifestation to get a drug to dampen the healing process that actually needed to happen uh, for something, you know, so awful that happened to me. And then spending my adulthood going, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Totally fine with that. And I'm like, I may be totally fine with that, but my body isn't. And to then go, oh, I am now leaning into places that are so new to me when it comes to my self-concept and my sobriety and my body and my, my bank account. These are things that I share with y'all because it really mirrors things that I watch my clients go through. And especially when I work with clients who haven't done the mindset work to get themselves ready for the next tier, then when they have opportunities to be series regular or, or test at network during pilot season, and they've not cleaned up the mindset work, they find themselves incapable of closing the deal. 
they will get those opportunities and 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 have the talent and be so close and then find even if they do get a booking they have an upper limit problem that quickly derails it you, this is where you'll see a lot of people spin out with drugs and alcohol and bad behavior i mean you know when on a writer stealing from the mall or whatever that you remember that from decades ago there are um all sorts of things that happen with uh with people in the entertainment industry as they go through these upper tier issues and so i'm a big fan of as y'all know in everything i do pulling back the curtain and really showing what's going on behind the scenes with everything we do in, in in this creative business and that really includes a lot of our own inner work and so i appreciate you guys um for letting me share this with y'all because as i'm exploring and learning things about how to heal this stuff and more importantly prevent new stuff from piling on uh i am showing that you can continue to live your life while you're doing the healing work you don't have to like put yourself out and go to rehab you don't have to put yourself in a sabbatical and pull so far back that you you know go on hiatus and tell, take time away from your acting pursuits and tell your agent don't you know i'm booked out you can't you can't send me on anything right now because i have to take care of me like you're actually able to go I know the difference between the healing work that I have to do from my past and the tendency that caused this problem in the first place and not piling new stuff on. And so right now my only mission most days is no new stuff. No new stuff piles on. So if something happens that's stressful, I go anywhere but the body. I go that stress, that client being late that contract falling through, that traffic snag, um, that miscommunication in my team, anywhere but the body. It's stressful. Okay. It's stressful. Anywhere but the body. Don't put it on your back. That That's what I'm currently saying. And then the work that I do when I'm in a good place and my back is not causing me problems, so not today, is to journal and work through a lot of years of a lot of stuff that I internalized and protected my family from and protected myself from and protected my partners from and put inside uh, and turned into pain. You can turn this into cancer. You can turn this into stomach ulcers. You can turn this into migraines. You can turn it into whatever you want, or you can find ways to not turn it into anything and let the thing be the thing. Um, and that's where I am now. Anywhere but the body, right, Deb? Cool. Thank you, Diane. Julia, what I mean is because of this back pain that had me laid out for so long, um, I know that right now the most vulnerable place on my body uh, is my back. And so I will be in the middle of something stressful. And instead of going, it's okay, we'll be fine, or going, damn it, and then just not expressing myself, I will go, Anywhere but the body. You're feeling the stress. You're feeling the stress. Yep, you're feeling the stress. Anywhere but the body. Feel the stress. Feel the stress, but don't take it on. I, I, no hitchhikers. <laughs> no hitchhikers. Not putting it in my body. Yeah, you got it? Anywhere but the body. Right. Okay, cool. So with that, the uh, age conversation and it never being too late. Here's why I think this is so incredibly valuable uh, as a conversation. Um, you know, as I tour around and I meet with people who uh, maybe I have only met online or some people that uh, I've met in person before, but we've maybe not worked together a lot. Um, we're, we're able to connect in deeper ways. And I love having conversations with people who are feeling challenged by ageism in the industry. Um, and, and in fact, I just had a coaching session this morning here in, uh, in New York with a client who is like, you know what, I'm finally owning my age. Um, and she's a little bit younger than I am. So I, I think like she just turned 40 and she's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to own my age. I'm, she goes, I'm not going to walk around going, Hey, I'm whatever. But if somebody says, how old are you? I'm, I'm going to tell them. And if they say, oh my God, you have such a youthful energy. You don't, you don't feel whatever your age is. She goes, I know, isn't that great? And, 
and whatever, because it's no different than someone asking you, you know, anything else about what type you play or your heritage or your natural hair color or whatever. You're like, you don't strike me as a blonde. You go, I know crazy, right? Like it, it, it is so okay to own your age because the more people who do, the less a big deal it is. Now, I'm not saying that means that by owning our age, suddenly the industry is going to stop putting out breakdowns where especially females are going to um, be allowed to be the same age as the males in romantic lead situations. Like, I mean, it, it, they're creating a reality that is aspirational for the male viewer almost every time with something like that. And, and it, it, when it's the opposite, when the um, female is significantly older than the male, it always has to be a part of the story. It can't just be that that's the age of the couple. It actually has to be that that's um, the novelty or, you know, some, some plot point to the whole thing, whatever. Um, we make change incrementally in this business. And one of the reasons that we find ourselves getting caught in places where the industry doesn't value older actors or older people, even older writers or older directors, the same comes from the fact that we feel like we need to hide how old we are. And one of the ways that we combat ageism is by owning how old we are and going, yeah, this is, this is 47 and it's awesome. And believe me, it only goes up from here, both in age and in awesomeness um, and, and being okay with who we are because when we're okay with who we are we show the industry we're okay with who we are and i find almost universally people are attracted to those who are comfortable in their own skin and when you start trying to hide anything about who you are it attracts a completely different type of collaborator it attracts predators it attracts people who are trying to bust your secret it attracts people who are trying to prey upon learning that about you and then using it against you and it instead if you're just like yep this is 47 you're like cool and then the people who are around you're like how cool is that that that's 47 uh jock you're proud to have lived 67 almost 68 years good for you man Oh my God, that's amazing. Right on. Uh, yeah, fabulous. Um, so the reason that I wanted to uh, talk about this specifically today, or something that I wanted to bring up specifically today, is uh, that I learned today that at the Athena Film Festival uh, that just went on here recently, um, they there was a panel, uh, a, a, a panel conversation going on where the panelists actually introduced themselves and shared how old they are. Like they, they introduced themselves and said, you know, and I'm 52 and I'm 47 and I'm 38 and I'm 60. And they put that out there specifically and then addressed that the reason they were putting their age out there was because it, it needs to be diffused as something that can be used against us somehow. And the way we take away its power is by using it ourselves. And so I thought that that was a beautiful incentive taking place as a part of the Athena Film Festival. And of course I love it because my middle name is Athene. So I'm like, yay, I'll never forget that that's where that took place. Um, but also I had mentioned that I was going to talk to you about uh, about Marianne in particular, uh, who y'all will remember, I met her in Chicago and she shared with me a DVD of her uh, performance of a show that she created. Um, and when she introduced herself in the SAG After Foundation talk that I was doing, you know, I was opening it up for Q&A and she was sharing a little bit about how she had um, created her own content because she's like, fuck it. You know, if they're not going to cast me, I'm going to cast myself and I'm going to show that this is absolutely a bankable commodity. And I'm going to teach you people that this is how you can use me and, and I'm going to make it look good and I'm going to have a lot of fun doing it. And then she said, and I'm 70 and I'm going to tell you, everybody in the room went, what? We, I mean, we had like some 20 year olds like sitting up going, oh, I got to step it up. I mean, it was so impressive. And I, I, I love having role models to look to. I love having pace cars to pay attention to and people who are role modeling the kind of behavior that I know is important to me 
as a leader in this industry. And we're all, by the way, leaders in this industry. If you're in this industry, you're a leader by definition because of how few people are pursuing it. So, you know, you've chosen a very select um, business to put yourself in. You've chosen a place where you are the oddball of all your friends. You've chosen a career path that is filled with outliers. And therefore, by definition, you are a leader and you're in a leadership position. And that means part of your work is to step up and enjoy that and and show people what you're capable of and what can be done. And just this this concept of time in general and that time is wasting. And, you know, I'm, I, I, this came about in Getting Gear for the Next Tier, which, of course, we're doing our first ever live round. Oh my God, I'm so excited. We're doing our first ever live round starting in just over a week. So if you're watching this live or in replay while it's still May of 2018, you have an opportunity to join us. I actually should probably um, put the info on here. If you go to tiny URL, sorry, while my, my whole computer shakes while I type, Erin uh, ended up getting a booking today. So she wasn't uh, able to join me. And usually she pops in and is able to share URLs. But so uh, here, here's the URL for those who want to join us uh, at, uh, so uh, anyway, if anybody wants to be my, my errand for the day, you know, good luck. The bar is set really high, but I, um, I I'm always used to her helping out with the, the links and stuff that I can throw up on screen. That right there will take you to getting gear for the next tier. We are currently enrolling for our first ever live round. And so starting on June 1st, we will be going every 10 days live phone calls so that it, we can do Q&A and we can talk about the curriculum and what we've experienced in those 10 days of each unit's phone call, right? And have a conversation about, okay, this one, I, I got confused. Okay, I fell behind. What is it that I need to understand about this? Because I, I, I'm just not feeling it. What is it about this topic that is so challenging for me? And how can I fix it? And really digging in there and talking about accountability and finding ways to support one another. And you guys can share hacks with one another if you're like, oh, my God. I have a way that this show Bible thing finally made sense for me or my brand got completely cracked open when I was working with Bonnie on this particular aspect and so forth. So I'm super excited about what we're going to be able to do in this live round. What it means, though, is that we are going to close registration. Um, nobody usually you can sign up anytime and you, people can just start every day of the year if they want to. That will no longer be the case. And so as of May 31st, 2018, at 10 p.m. Pacific, if you're not in, you're not getting in till late 2018 because we're going to close the doors. And that also means if you had been in and want to come back, you can't. So um, we are like seriously shutting down registration for several months. So I'm telling you that now so that you uh, get the opportunity to join us if that feels like something you want to do. David, of course, says, do it. It will change your life. David, some people don't want their lives changed. They like it the way they is. Let me show you, Kim, since you're talking about how great Aaron is. This is not Aaron, obviously, Cynthia Nixon. But this New York magazine, um, Aaron brought this to me when I checked in. Uh, she had bought it and or her parents had bought it and kept it. She had kept it for me. Uh, her dad had bought like 20 copies. It makes me so happy. Here's why. Are you ready? If you follow me on uh, Instagram, you already saw where I shared this. But look at this double page spread in New York Magazine. Can y'all see? Who dat? Who dat pretty girl? Who dat pretty girl? What? How awesome is that? How awesome is that? Julia, I'm so excited too. David, I'm so excited too. Oh my God, look at all these people. Excited, excited, excited. Yes, Rosalie, that is our queen. That is our queen. That's our queen right there. That's Erin. Two page spread, a double page fucking spread in New York Magazine. Come on now. She fancy. So, so when she got booked on something today, she had to leave me hanging. She couldn't be here on the live. Boo. Boo, boo. I know, of course, right? I know. Yeah, totally. That kind of confidence and that kind of like, got it. Oh my God, so good. 
talk about role modeling, bill five action. Uh, what is the price for next year? The way it works is it's a $400 tuition for the hundred day program plus 20 days to poke around uh, at the SMFA vault, join the grads only Facebook group, uh, the opportunity to become a mentor, which gets you and your mentee free coaching. Uh, it also gets you uh, the ability to access me for coaching at a discount, which is awesome. Um, and that gives you full run of the 100 days with enough time to circle back and revisit any of the days that you maybe didn't get to or, or really want to spend a little more time in um, before we then switch over to the $30 a month ongoing gym membership. And it's ongoing, meaning as long as you want it to be ongoing. The day you're like, you know what? I've done enough. I've now done the hundred days a couple times because we have people who do them a second time, a third time, a fourth time. Uh, if you're just, you're at a new tier, you're having new experiences, you're possibly meeting new challenges. And now you're going, Oh, Holy shit. That day that didn't mean a lot to me because why was I going to have a film going into distribution? Oh shit. I need to get back and revisit that day. So you want to be able to do it uh, at, at different tiers, uh, you know, revisit all of that. You get to do that unlimited uh, while you're in the gym membership of the $30 a month. And uh, that also, of course, gets you uh, access to the, that grads only private Facebook group where I jump in and occasionally do Facebook lives like this and cover specific topics. Uh, we have lots of discussions in there. Um, and of course the ongoing coaching discounts and the opportunity to be a mentor, all that jazz. So, uh, yes, it is absolutely available for people all over the world. And let me put that URL up one more time. Uh, we also have a payment plan. If you're not into like drop and flow honey all at once, not a problem. You are absolutely welcome to take advantage of our payment plan, which breaks it down into, it, it raises it a little higher because there's admin costs with multiple payments. So, you know, if you want to save the money that saves the money in terms of total expense, pay all at once. But if you're like, no, I like to break it up and I understand that that costs me more. It's one fifty a month for three months. So uh, 450 and then the 30 a month kicks in uh, after September, mid, mid September sometime. We then uh, get into the, the gym membership part of it. And if you're like, no, nope, I don't need the gym membership part of it, then out you go. Thank you. Hope you had a blast. Uh, get your coin right and get in gear. Thanks, David. Uh, Julia, first time around, wasn't doing on camera at all. Ignored those days. Excited to dig in now. Yeah, good. Good. Christy, good. Thank you. Randy, thank you. Fabulous feedback, you guys. Um, so, yes, those of you who are planning to join us, um, you got like a little over a week to get going. Um, and oh, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you who uh, are planning to join us for the live round, you've got like a week to do it. A little over a week, and then we're going to close the doors. Uh, I will actually be flying home from Toronto when doors close. Um, and then on June 1st, I'll meet you in the dojo. We will be there uh, opening up one day at a time. For those of you who are currently in the gym membership, uh, ongoing membership thing, you just have to hit reply to the email that I sent out on uh, April 27th. Go fish that email out, hit reply, say I'm in. We'll make sure you're in. You'll get the welcome kit. The welcome kit has been upgraded with some new goodies for you, of course. Uh, and uh, I will be opening up the Start Strong page in the dojo this week uh, so that we can go ahead and start doing that preliminary pre-day one homework. Um, so that's coming up this week. Okay. But the reason that this topic of the, am I too old? Is it too late? Came across my mind was because... Mm. Yeah, JC, I think yours might start the 17th. Um, yeah, the um, the reason that that was on my mind was because so many people are like, what if I fall behind? What if I fall behind? Okay, well, this concept of fall behind is something that is really tethered to a clock that only you hold yourself to. And here's why I say that. Even, even though you're like, Bonnie, it's a 100-day program. That's your clock. Your clock is 100 days. I'm like, okay, yes, technically we are every day opening new curriculum. And on each 10th day, we are holding a call. There, those calls will be recorded. 
you will get to replay them at your leisure pleasure which is there does it matter which way we say that word that always bugs me is it at your leisure is it at your leisure I don't know. you know um whatever at your whim how's that as you fancy you can listen to the call replays um yeah, there is a timeline on which we operate. Yeah, there is a calendar. Yeah, there is time. But we all got the same 24 hours every day. And we're the ones who put deadlines on ourselves for what it is we think we're going to accomplish by a certain point. This is where age gets really tricky is because we go um, into this place of if I don't get something accomplished by X age, like if I haven't made it as an actor by, oh, what was mine? Oh, here's one I had, y'all. Here's one I had. You want to laugh at me? Get ready. I was a kid actor. So I had already been on, you know, professional sets and had worked and earned lots of money, both hand modeling and acting. I know I need to shake my hands down um, in the seventies and into the eighties. And I believed that by the time I was 20, my 20th birthday would be announced on entertainment tonight by Mary Hart. So on my 20th birthday, I woke up crying because I knew I had failed at my acting career because my name was not going to be announced on entertainment tonight by Mary Hart that day. What? What? I, I had decided at the ripe old age of just left teens behind turned 20, like a minute ago that I was a failure. And really I had set myself up that I was going to, be considered a failure by the time I was 20 by having such a ridiculous goal. But it's also, that's a, that's a good kid goal. A kid brain does that. The problem is even as adults, we continue to give ourselves those ridiculous kid brain goals. Um, and this really ties into that mind body work that I'm doing right now and ha ha having to dive deep to heal myself from places where I've let my kid brain, my survival brain, my poor girl brain, my, my victim brain, like have to be in charge of keeping me safe. And I'm having to show a lot of gratitude for the part of my brain that has worked so hard to keep me safe. And, and that has channeled a lot of what's going on with me into physical pain to keep me safe. And I, I get it. And I'm so grateful, so grateful, so grateful. Someone had asked if I do tap and yes, absolutely. I'm, I, we had masterclass here in New York on Saturday and one of my master classers who is also a masterminder who is also a part of the hundred days uh, as she was talking she got a little emotional and started doing this and I said you do realize you're tapping right girl and she was like yes and I said let's all tap and so I played a script that uh, Dana Middleton created for me um, she sent me off on this trip with four two to three and a half minute uh, EFT scripts for things that she knew uh, and I knew that I'm working on right now. And I played one of them and we did EFT uh, just sitting right there in simple studios in New York. It was amazing. And, uh, and it was really great. So I, yes, big fan of pattern interrupting and shifting that energy through tapping. Um, and in fact, one of the days of getting gear for the next tier uh, is a day of EFT. And um, I, I remember being really nervous about introducing that uh, as a part of the curriculum because it's, you know, pretty woo woo. But for for the people who've leaned into it and gone, oh, my God, that has become so powerful for me. It, it makes me really happy that I've shared it because it can settle you down before auditions. It can just get you in a completely different headspace about so many things. And I think it's incredibly valuable for that. Um, saying that because when you set yourself up for any kind of deadline of I'm going to make it by the time I'm 30. I'm going to have kids by the time I, mine was, I'm going to own a house by the time I'm 40. And so I was desperate in um, the years that I was 37, 38 and 39. We were house hunting. Keith and I were actively like, don't really have the money, but we are going to fucking buy a house. And we were exploring 
grants and loans and low income incentives. And we were, I mean, like I was looking at fucking shanty lean to fixer upper crack houses in LA because I so desperately wanted to be a homeowner until one of my best girlfriends, uh, Lisa Salta, y'all might know her. She's a casting director. She works uh, as an exec at Amazon now, but she used to be casting director on um, Big Love and um, uh, True Blood and a bunch of cool shows under and with partnering with um, Libby Goldstein and, uh, oh my God, who's the, Junie Lowry Johnson. I was like, who's the, the legend of casting that she worked with coming up? Anyway, uh, Lisa and I have been friends since we were both still actors in, 2000. Long, long, long time. Oh my God. Long time ago. Anyway, uh, she actually is the one that confronted me about it. And she said, it's not like you live in squalor. Like what, what's wrong with where you live? And I went, oh my God, I have gotten so focused on, I have to have a house and what that status means that I have forgotten to love where I live. I live at the beach. I live blocks from the beach. I have a top floor apartment facing the ocean. Like I, I wake up every day and hear seagulls and can smell the ocean breeze and have that, that dewy, uh, like in the place of LA where it is so fucking desert climate and skin is so dry to actually be able to have that, that morning fog. Like there's nothing like it. And people travel from all over the world to get to see the place where I live. Like I, I need to really put in check how I feel about this failure of not having the chance to be a homeowner by the time I'm 40. And let me tell you, at 47, I am so fucking glad I don't own a home right now. Holy balls, what a mistake that would have been. I mean, yeah, I miss the whole, like, I don't have a yard and I therefore don't have puppies. But believe me, with as much as I'm traveling right now, it's not like I could take care of puppies right now anyway. Um, and I love the autonomy. I love being able to pick up and go tour around to spend like right now a month out. And uh, in, in, in October, it's going to be five weeks that I'm gone. Like just to be able to do that and have that kind of freedom uh, is just phenomenal. And I love the way uh, things have turned out. But I had set myself up that I am going to have achieved this by this date. I'm going to ask you. Who would like to volunteer that you've set yourself up for I I have to make it by an age or if I haven't made it, if I haven't gotten an agent by and it put a put a timeline on it. Who would like to share something like that that we can kind of bust through? I appreciate you guys like these comments are amazing. I'm seeing like there's a lot of conversation going on. I'll come back around uh, and read all the comments later. Um, I'm actually going to go to a stretch class, a flex class uh, tonight in New York. And this is a bit of reclaiming work while you guys are deciding who wants to share. Uh, if you've set yourself up for any kind of ticking clock that isn't necessarily. Uh, let's see. Okay. Now this one's interesting, David. A house and full career by 10 years in LA. That's a little different than putting an age on it, but it's still, yeah, that's still still something that can make you a little crazy headed if what that means doesn't actually happen by then. Um, you know, it really depends on how you're defining it. I like you're a little vague on the full career, but I, I would be like, what does that mean? Did that mean, you know, I have a great agent. I'm in the union. I go out a lot. Casting directors know me. I book here and there. Like that's a full career to a lot of people, by the way. So I would get super specific on that. Um, oh my God, Rebecca, kiss of death, that one. I write about that in self-management for actors that when you say, uh, I'm going to give it a year, I'm going to give it a, give LA a year. It's like, all you did was just set the clock for when you're going to leave LA. So I'm like straightening my, my little laptop situation here. I've got it balanced on, get this, the, uh, what's it called? The ice What's that ice bin called? I can't even think of what that's called. Like the bin that you go get ice from the ice machine. I don't even know what that ice bucket, bucket, ice bucket challenge. I know it's an ice bucket. Okay. I've got like the, the Kleenex box and then the ice bucket like stacked because they're both made of the same kind of like woven wood type thing or whatever. So I've got them on top of each other here, uh, balanced out. Um, one of the things that I'm doing for my body is I'm going back to my pole studio here in New York and taking a flex and uh, stretching class tonight uh, to kind of reclaim 
moving my body because I was, you know, in either pole or Pilates five to eight classes a week uh, when I got stricken with the bed rest of the upper limit problem. And so uh, going back and, and just being in the studio, not doing pole classes, but in the studio. And, and I think it's important. That it's not my, my home studio in LA. Cause I actually have some other garbage that I need to work out um, about how like none of them checked on me and how uh, I spent tens of thousands of dollars and referred hundreds of people to that studio over the years. And then when I was laid out, I got like two little emails like, you okay. And then that's it. And I'm like, wow, fuck off. And I went, woo, I got some anger. I got some entitlement. I got some, I got some anger at these people thinking that because they're a business that I invested in, that they somehow owe me love. And I'm like, Ooh, that's some tangled shit that I gotta, I gotta unweave. So it's really good that I'm doing this here in New York where I don't have the same emotional attachment to the place. It's like, it's just, it's, it's my New York pole studio. They're fine, but uh, I don't have that little intimate, weird enmeshment uh, that I started feeling uh, happening here in uh, in New York. So tonight I'm going to be doing a little reclaiming and it's very interesting that my body wants to be a little extra pain twingy today because I'm like, of course, because it knows that if I go to this class and then don't die and like don't wake up tomorrow in like I've got to go to the emergency room pain um, that I I actually do get to fix this with my brain. And, um, and my, my part of my brain is terrified about that. So we've got a lot of interesting messages going on in my body right now. Uh, but yeah, the, if I'm going to make it in a year, well, that's a big one. Let's see, Katya, what you got told myself if I didn't have a career by the time I was 40, it was never going to happen. Turn 41 in February. Can't seem to shake that damn mindset. Yeah. Because you, you made it like really real for you. And so now it's almost like every day that you keep doing it at 41, there's this other little voice that's like, why bother? You already failed. Why bother? You already failed. If there's a way that you could trick that a little bit and go, great, I already failed. No stakes. No stakes. I, I like literally have nothing to fear because I've already failed at the thing that I said was hugely important. So since I've already failed at that, great, no stakes, take the pressure off. Is there a way that you can twist what it is that you did to yourself and forgive yourself, forgive young you for having set up an impossible standard um, because you, you don't control the industry. You don't control when you're going to make it. What about the, the actress in Black Panther who didn't start until she was 88? 92 now. Did y'all see that story? Like it, Kathy Houston, of course, is a wonderful example. She didn't start acting until her late 40s, won two Emmys. Um, you know, and, and when she won one of them, she held it up and said, you know, the only thing I wish I could do with, with winning this Emmy today is dig up my dead ex-husband to show him I could do it. And I'm like, oh my God, that was so fucking on brand. Um, anyway, uh, just could you forgive that part of yourself, that young part of yourself that set you up like this and then let yourself off the hook with a great. I've already failed. Cool. So since I've already failed, have fun. No, no high stakes. Now, like whatever success I have, it'll be like a total bonus because it, it, it's not going toward any massive goal that I have for myself. And I'm not saying don't have goals, but I'm saying reframe that shitty mind stuff that you did for yourself and to yourself so that you can have more fun along the way now and not have that pressure. Also think of the pressure you bring into the room on every audition. When you said, I have to make it by whatever age or whatever number of years, it's like the stakes are so fucking high for that audition because you're like, I, I have to make it. And if I don't make it, everyone here is complicit in helping me fail. And I mean, like that pressure is in the room, whether you want it to be or not. So uh, yeah, Samuel L. Jackson, 40s or early 50s, the Idiot's Guide to the Law of Attraction. Ooh, thanks, Marianne. I love that. Ooh. Oh, David, well said. High stakes are a cancer to your goals. I think high stakes are great for the scene. Like if you need to have emotion, Put it in your work, put high stakes in your work, but maybe not in your um, career goals. Yeah, good. Oh, Katya, I'm so glad. 
great. Reframe it, reframe it, play with it. And every time you hear that old tape of, yeah, but what's the point? Imagine me buying clothes that are too big. Okay. Imagine me not having the reality of having lost 60 pounds. And by not having that reality, I keep bringing the wrong size in the, in the dressing room. Like I, it, it was hard for me to unsubscribe to the Lane Bryant uh, catalog and emails because Lane Bryant was where I shopped because that's the plus girl store. I, I don't, I don't know where to shop right now. And so I'm still figuring that out. And when I walk in and look at the things, I'm, I'm so sure they're looking at me going, all the salespeople are looking at me going, oh, she must be buying a gift for her niece. Like she couldn't possibly, like, like this old fat lady with no money, she couldn't possibly be here for her. Old, fat, no money, right here, right here. And of course, what's actually true is I look damn good. I always look damn good no matter what size. Please be clear on that. Skinny, rich as a motherfucker, and old? No, 47. 47. I still got half my life. Y'all told me that on the last one. So there we go. Uh, high stakes are fantastic in a rewrite. Yeah, Mars boy Mike. That's right. Uh, Eileen says, I think we can fall into the mindset of regret and failure, which is something we have to stay away from doing to ourselves and to others. Truly. Uh, I tell myself it's never too late, but does the industry allow us to break that ceiling? Will they accept us? Especially older, older William, uh, older William, older women thoughts on the state of the industry. Yeah. Eileen, the way, the way the industry changes is through our influence. And so a big big, big, big part of our work is to let the industry see there's nothing wrong with aging. When we feel shame about aging, we tell the industry it's okay to make us feel ashamed for aging. So they do. When we buy magazines that tell us how to hide our cellulite or our true feelings or our age, we are reinforcing what then it sells back to us. So we have to be the leaders in saying, I'm totally castable as I am. And that means creating our own content, collaborating with people who are colorblind and age blind and able bodied blind. Uh, I, I always watch, um, uh, um, uh, the United Shades of America uh, with W. Kamal Bell, my boyfriend, W. Kamal, w. Kamal Bell. Ooh, speaking of Berkeley, I'll be going up to Berkeley. That's where he lives. Uh, Keith knows he's my boyfriend. It's fine. Um, w. Kamal Bell uh, has a show on CNN called United Shades of America. And last night's episode was all on people with disabilities. And are they people with disabilities or are they disabled people? And how, you know, we would never say, Kamal's examples or the example used on Kamal was you would never be called uh, a person who's black. You're a black person. And so it's like, oh, wow. Like the, just the, the able body mindset of how to even refer to this community is fraught with mistakes. And part of your work, if you have a disability is to educate as a leader, because you are, because of the, minorities are leaders. Minorities have to be leaders. Minorities have to be leaders because there are fewer. And so when there are fewer, you have to be a leader because you have to teach people what the rules are for your culture. And that culture includes the culture of aging. We show people what the rules are. And when we say, yes, there is a reason for me to feel ashamed, I lie about my age, we just reinforce that Hollywood is going to keep telling us that there's something wrong with aging. So yes, be the change. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for being so much more succinct than I am. Yes. Be the change. That is correct. That is the job. Right on. Right on. Diane, so what? So what that you can only get known for co-stars at 50, 55, 60, 65? So what? Do you, do you not want co-stars? I mean, have all the co-stars. So what? Like that's still work. That's job. That's jobs out there. That's work you can get. And if you want to do larger roles, create larger roles for yourself while you're letting the industry pay you to do co-star roles of that age. I mean, come on. Hey, our newest member of the Television Academy, Andrew Nielsen. Congratulations, Punkin. Proud of you. 
sorry, I missed that when you initially made the announcement, but congratulations on joining the Television Academy. I am so glad you're with us. Let's see, Amy Lee, what's up? Woke up with a heavy feeling in my chest, feeling a failure, being too old, too fat, too far behind my plan. Carried that all day. Universe giving me a sign right now. You are welcome. Gorgeous. Absolutely. My pleasure. Look, th this is a mindset game. We teach the industry how to treat us. We teach the industry how to cast us. We teach the industry how to value us. So let's please be clear about how much value we're walking around with every damn day. Can I get an amen? All right. My pleasure. My pleasure. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Good. Great. Awesome. Ooh. Ah. As my back goes creak, creak, creak. And here's what I have to keep saying. I go back. I hear you, baby. You're scared. You are so scared. You are going to walk into a gym today and there's going to be 20, 20 year olds in that room. And you, you don't, you're going to feel not enough. You're going to feel too big. You're going to feel too old and creaky and in pain. And you know what? Yes. And you could buy the studio. So if you need to find some place where you feel good about yourself, then fucking feel good about your bank account. But that can go away. So be careful with that, too. I mean, how about just feel good because you're a good person and your heart is in the right place and you are so happy with this beautiful day that you just had and nobody can take that away from you. And I know you're scared. And so I so appreciate you, body, for being scared. And I appreciate you, brain, for trying to protect me by making my body in pain so that I don't do something that's really scary. But you know what? Fear is not where I make my decisions from. Nope, nope, nope. Good, Mary. Thank you. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I'm so glad. Everybody should create their own work, Diane. It's so empowering because what it shows the industry is I'm worth investing in. I invested in myself. Y'all, self-management for actors wouldn't exist if I didn't invest in myself. Self-management for actors, first edition, which, by the way, somebody on Instagram shared a picture of having bought the first edition on Amazon like this week. And I was just like, okay, that book is from 2003. It talks about black and white headshots, VHS cassettes for demo reels, and running around town doing drop-offs. Please don't buy the first edition. I mean, it's fine. It's still a great book, but holy balls. Fourth edition. Fourth edition, fourth printing. If it's 2018 and you're watching this, please buy the fourth edition. Uh, I, I don't know when the fifth edition. Uh, uh, Keith wants me to wait. And my team wants me to write a different book first. And I want to just enjoy my life a little bit and maybe take some more sabbaticals and breaks and a cruise because I'm going on a cruise here in October and I can't fucking wait. I'm fancy. Okay. What was I going to tell you? Self-management for actors only exists because I invested in myself. My first casting job for Fox, I got paid enough to print self-management for actors. And so I worked that job for five weeks. And as soon as the job was over, I took six weeks to write self-management for actors and sent it to the printer with every penny that I earned while I was working at Fox. And if I had not invested in myself with self-management for actors and believing that there was a chance that, you know, a few thousand people would buy copies and therefore pay me back for my investment, we wouldn't be where we are today. So y'all, that, that's all I'm asking you to do when you create your own work is show the industry, look, I, I believe in me. You believe in you and any other business you're going to invest in yourself, you know, so invest in yourself. And you're like, yes, Bonnie, I already invest in myself. I get headshots. I get training. I go to the gym. I have a demo reel. I have a website. I spend all the money on all the trades. I do all the submission websites. I go to the workshops. I, I believe me, I invest in myself. I'm like, great. Work out a budget and maybe reallocate some of that money, especially money that you might be spending on actor busy work and create a short for a couple grand so that you can show the world who it is that you are. And oh my God, make it a series, put it up on YouTube and submit yourself for an Emmy because the television Academy is absolutely a place for you to submit your work and become an Emmy nominated fucking actor before anybody else has invested in you. It's totally possible. You can even be an Emmy winning actor before somebody has invested in you. What a magical fucking time to be an actor. No excuses. No excuses. Yes, JC, I wrote self-management for actors in six weeks. Yes, that is true. Uh, each new edition also took six weeks. Six weeks. That is the magic number. 
Yes, Kathy, you just did that. Congratulations, sweetheart. I'm so proud of you. And I saw you got on my coaching calendar. I cannot wait to chat with you about strategies for that. And we need to book our um, our dinner with the boys for when I get back. So um, email me when you want to talk about like some dates in June. Let's let's get together um, because I'm I'm ready. Let's make it happen. And I'm also seeing your chiropractor again the day I get back. I will be seeing her. So right, no excuses, Kim. No fucking excuses. Yeah, y'all. Right on. Right on. So proud of y'all. So proud of y'all. Good. Do it. Any Anybody need any more tweaking on any of this or you feel like you got it? There's no behind. There's no too late. There's no I'm now no longer valuable in the industry. Only if you buy into it. You may be less valuable than you were yesterday, but it's only if you buy into it that it becomes a problem. If you're like, Hmm, that's interesting. I got to shift my strategy. Then you're fine. No problems. Only interesting fucking opportunities, as Tony Robbins says. And I'm mad at Tony Robbins right now, so I got to be careful quoting him because hashtag me too, Tony Robbins. You need a you need a, a sensitivity training, sir. Someone is asking: Is Toronto is Toronto sold out? No, I actually canceled the Toronto workshop because of low enrollment, and uh, gave the people who were enrolled the option of private coaching or refunds. Um, so after all that, like we had a place, and then we lost a place, and then a university, Ryerson University, uh, agreed to host me, which was phenomenal because uh, I love when I get to do things at colleges or universities. And uh, then we didn't have enough enrollment to make it a full class. Um, it, it was going to just be like small group coaching and small group coaching is way more expensive than a class. So, um, so that's what we chose to do with it. So wah, wah, boo. Deb says, just want to say that people will believe what you present to them. No one has a clue what my real age is. True that. You know, we are to the world who we present to the world. Fact. Fact. Kate, do agents and managers develop 43-year-old actors? I would have to do a lot of targeting homework to figure out which ones do. Um, but I believe that the data will back up that there is someone out there with a developmental level career at every age. And then just finding what agent or manager combination has been the right fit for them uh, and then therefore might be for you is the question. But just because it worked for one doesn't mean necessarily that's going to be the right one for you because they may say, well, we already have our developmental clients of age. Um, and so it's more important that you find the ones that are the right fit for you creatively and then don't worry about whether or not they're going to see you as worth the investment because all the homework has shown they're going to see dollar signs when they look at you. And also keep in mind, the older we get, the easier it is to get smaller roles because a lot of people of a certain age are have been at this for so long or are at certain tiers. They don't want to do anything below top of show guest star. And there are one line roles that need to go to actors of all ages. And so if you're like, I, I'll do it. I got it. I will take that one line co-star and I'm 50, then way to go. But, uh, but I would say maybe your approach might need to be adjusted just a wee bit. And I believe you're enrolled in getting gear for the next tier live. I think, I think I saw a registration come through in your name. Not sure. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. I think. And if so, um, this is something that we can dive in on on our membership calls. Bum, bum. And of course, in the comments of the dojo. And um, we can do coaching as well. Whatever. I mean, like, depending on how much energy and time uh, we need to put into the strategy for you. Okay, so y'all, I um, shot new headshots on Friday. Let's see what I can show you. I can't show you the whole gallery because, oh my God, for fuck's sake. And like the headshots take too long, y'all. I was like, he took a couple and then I went and I looked just, we were just checking. First of all, I felt like I had drag queen makeup on. She spent an hour doing my makeup and I don't think I've had anybody touching my face for that long since I was on set 20 years ago. Like I, I seriously felt like I was on RuPaul's drag race. I had so much makeup on. And then of course you look at the proofs and it looks like I'm not wearing any makeup at all. And Keith was like, you should have had more makeup on. And I'm like, God dang. I, anyway, so clearly I have no concept of 
like how much makeup is too much makeup. But it, to me, it looked like a lot of makeup. But anyway, um, this is what I can show you. This is uh, what I put up on my uh, Instagram stories where you can see some of the proofs. Oh, looky. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty girl. Mm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yay me. Okay. Anything you like? Okay. Good times. I'm excited. So um, my team is now weighing in on which pictures they like. <sighs> it's crazy making. But anyway, this is now going to be the picture that will be on the back of the books and uh, at all my social media and my IMDb and all that. Because I had not had new headshots since 2010. And, you know, since 2010, a lot has happened, most notably, um, I'm 47 now, and I was like 39 when those pictures were taken before, and uh, and also I'm sober, and I've lost 60 pounds, and I have a completely different energy, uh, so I wanted photos that match my new energy, so, yeah, right? I'm pretty happy. Anyway, I was just like, can we be, like, as soon as I looked in the back of the camera, I was like, okay, we got it. Can we be done? And he was like, I don't know, and then he shot me for like, an hour and a half and I, was going, and I had clothing change and I was just like, we seriously have it. Like I, I don't need 600 pictures of my face. And I'm like, once we have it, do we have to keep doing this? But anyway, uh, who gave us permission as queer? I said, okay, thanks babe. Thanks my BFF. Oh, thanks Theron. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Christy. Oh my God. You guys are awesome. All right. Any more questions, uh, even questions not on topic. Uh, if you've got questions about getting gear for the next tier, obviously let me know. If you've got uh, questions for me about aging and uh, busting through the blocks, thank you, Rosalie, for putting on my attention the question about uh, Toronto. Um, I'm still going to Toronto. I'm still going to be in Toronto for a week because I'm meeting with private coaching clients while I'm there. Um, so I am happy to meet with you if you are uh, in Toronto and we're hoping to take my class and want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, just let me know. Even if you're not alumni, uh, we can work out a way that you can get a coaching with me, even though usually I, I only see people who have been through getting here for the next year or who uh, are alumni of my programs. Because I canceled the one-day workshop in Toronto, um, I will open up to uh, non-alumni if, if you'd like. So just let me know. Let me know. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Thank you. I saw you on Law and Order um, in my hotel room in Chicago. Oh, thanks, Alita. I appreciate it. Good to see you, sweetheart. Hope all's well. Hope all is well. Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. Uh, Y'all are so sweet. Thank you, everybody. Cool. All right. I'm going to hang out just another minute in case there are any questions. And then I'm going to go refill a prescription because I realized I don't need it. But I also know if I decide I need it while I'm in Toronto, I don't know if I can refill a prescription in Toronto. I mean, so I will refill it here where I know I can um, just to have it. Uh, Jody, I don't look my age 49. Get headshots that age me up or lean into a younger look uh, in in Chicago, all the CDs know me though. So pointless. Jody, here's the deal, hon. You don't want to try and get headshots that match your age just for the sake of being accurate. You want to get headshots that match your energy, irrespective of your age. So if you're already told you don't look your age, then that means your headshots are also not going to look your age. And who cares? Right? Match your energy. Headshots match your energy. That's what you want to do. Cool. And yes, of course, if all the Chicago casting directors already know you, your headshot is more a placeholder than anything else um, because they already know your work and know what you're about uh, and know that you play. What was it enjoyably poor ukulele? So adorable. Oh, my God. Adorable. Let's see. Richie says, do you have to test for networks for Amazon for series regular? Same as other networks. Yes. So far. So far, yes, the um, network testing process so far is nearly identical for Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, Facebook. 
uh, any of the companies that are putting out new series and investing bajillions of dollars into them uh, tend to be doing a network test process that is very similar to what we are used to with the major networks. Um, this can shift obviously over time. Uh, we, we are just learning how you know, for example, Amazon, how aggressive Bezos was with investing in new series and then how aggressive he was with cutting them when they underperformed um, and and way more aggressive in cutting than other heads of networks. Uh, and so, you know, we we get to dial in every network execs um, tendencies as as we go through a pilot season and learn uh, the kinds of things that happen uh, after upfronts, which we just experienced here in New York. Um, and I hope, oh, I hope you guys are keeping up with Casting About on Twitter. Casting About, let me put them up here. Casting About. Uh, Casting About has a Twitter account and they last week put out a report for each of the networks uh, based on what happened at Upfronts, which shows got picked up, renewed, canceled, uh, which ones got extended small lives and not long lives. Um, and this is all information for your show Bible. So you want to make sure that you uh, update your show Bible with this information. And y'all, if show Bibling is not your thing, consider meeting with an accountability group to build that muscle because you are only going to benefit from what you keep up with about uh, what other people uh, what people are working on and uh, who their relationships are with, uh, webs of trust, studying those webs of trust, because when a show gets canceled, it's not bad news. It just means that all these people have now gone on to work on other things and you can predict and track and get out ahead of trends for what they're going to be working on and with whom they're going to be working if you have a good show Bible. So highly recommend that. Kill uh, that. All right. Looks like we have Mostly wrapped up on questions. LA Ninja Show Bible Group represent. Yes, I told the New Yorkers uh, that y'all have been getting together um, doing Show Bible Group every week in LA. And of course, New York reminds me that they've been getting together every week for accountability uh, for more than a year. So welcome. <laughs> Basically, New York's like, yeah, we, we already do that. So um, I fucking love it. I love it. Uh, Casting About, yes, does uh, cover Fox projects, Richie, and um, uh, not all Fox projects are on LA Casting anymore. Some of them went because they had to and are already back on breakdown. So uh, the political brouhaha that uh, created that embargo is um, slowly drifting back over where casting directors can choose wherever they want to put their breakdowns. So um, that was short-lived. Uh, which... I predicted uh, it would be because you can't you can't make independent casting directors like forced to use a site that is not user friendly for the type of casting they do and leave all their casting history behind. Um, it just it's it's stupid business. Um, so even though they're still officially the uh, the boycott, um, it hasn't it hasn't changed much, honestly. And uh, casting about definitely uh, covers all except for those that has have, have said specifically uh, casting information withheld at casting director's uh, request. But you just have to sniff around and you can find out all the casting information that's not at casting about um, because that's why patterns a self management for actors. That's why patterns are so fabulous. Um, I was going to send y'all to the new store, Keith and team. Thank you, team. Oh, my God. Uh, Losi and Mimi and Aaron and Keith. And I don't think Verona had to clock in for this, but maybe she did. Uh, have been working on upgrading our store. And at uh, SMFA4.com, which is where you go, of course, to get the book, Self-Management for Actors. We have it on audiobook. Uh, it's available on Amazon and on Kindle. Make sure you get the fourth edition, hence the four. Um the store, we upgraded the store. And this meant a lot of people got emails. Uh, there were like 300,000 purchases at the store since uh, it was created. And so when we did the transfer, the migration, uh, it sent out emails, started sending emails out to everybody. Keith was able to get in there and stop it, but not after a certain number of emails had been sent out. So uh, quite a few people got some emails from us uh, saying, hey, your, your purchase from 2011 is complete. And it made people nervous because they're like, I didn't just spend money. And we're like, well, no, it says from 2011. It's just, anyway, it, it was awesome. Uh, but I think the store is almost entirely fixed now uh, in its new environment. Keith tells me I have to go and pretty some things up. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do that in June. 
Um, because right now, anybody to come crying to me, saying I missed it, you didn't tell me. Okay. Can I put in there? No, I was going to put in the, the year 2018 because I don't know when you're watching this. But anyway, 2018, the deadline. May 31st, 2018, 10 p.m. Pacific. You got to be in by then. Or you can't join us at all. That's it. Okay, great. Oh, that's funny, Mike. That's funny. Awesome. All right. Oh, Keith says almost all fixed. Yay. Hi, baby. You're on set today. How's it going? Love you. Yay. I'm wearing my too big one. You see? <laughs> all right, you beautiful people. Thank you so much for joining me for this fabulous chat. It has been a sublime pleasure. Yes, I will put the replay up at YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, please come over to the Facebook to comment the Bonnie Gillespie page at Facebook. We will uh, chat there in the comments ongoing. And for those of you that are coming on into the dojo for getting gear for the next tier live, get ready for a hundred days. We're going to fucking rock your world. I cannot wait. We're going to have a blast. Love you beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Love y'all. Thank you. Stay ninja at any age. Bye y'all. <laughs>